Hey guys, Mike in the Woods here. A few weeks ago, you saw my video where I got started on what's essentially a pack frame saw, which is a combination of a massive 30 inch saw, uh, while also being a sort of primitive frame for a pack. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'll link it right up at the top of the screen. And because I didn't finish it at the camp in today's video, we're gonna finish it. And real quick, before we get started, if you're new here, consider subscribing, hit the like button if you find this interesting, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. Let's get into the video. Uh, shout out to Steve Wallace, step two. All right, so on this table, you can see I've got a few things. I've got my mining rig in the corner here, got my 3D printer, my ultra manly uh, Cricut vinyl cutter. And right here, this is the actual pieces to the uh, pack frame saw. So it's got a 30 inch blade. This thing is massive. This is gonna be the biggest saw I've ever seen or used. And I'm gonna be excited to finally have an actual saw and not my rinky dink little Baco Laplander. But these are the three core structural components. Blade goes in the bottom. You key ring either end so that uh, the blade doesn't pull through. And then you drill holes through the top ends. You have what's called a whistless, uh, whistless in the middle with some uh, paracord or string or something. And you twist it end over end to tighten the top and bring it in and pull the blade as taut as you could possibly get it. This is probably gonna be a multi-day process. So if you see me changing clothes in between cuts, that's why. All right, so got the centerpiece and get this all in frame. As you can see, it's got some uh, uh, some tabs at the end. It's kind of not perfectly vertical. It kind of slants inward a bit. And these tabs is supposed to fit all the way in like that. Ah, it doesn't want to come out. <laughs> there we go. I think the uh, slant is actually supposed to be facing up like this because it's the top that gets kind of tightened inward and the two bottom pulled apart to kind of stretch the uh, blade. So the first step is to get these pieces to fit all the way onto the end snugly. All right, we're getting somewhere. I worked it in there a little bit. It's still got a little bit of play, but uh, that's fine. I guess now we focus on the other end. Well, I got sweat literally dripping down my face right now, but I did it. I got both sides in. It's not perfect, but it's enough to uh, move on to the next step. Next step is to go to the bottom, which are these two end pieces here. And I gotta cut a vertical, come on, stay put. I gotta cut a vertical line so that the blade can go in. Uh, and after that's done, flip it over, drill two holes through the top, uh, I'm gonna actually 3D print the witless, uh, whistless for this, uh, cause I gotta <laughs> throw my fun tech into this somehow. Uh, and then wind it around and essentially what it does is it pulls the blade taut on the bottom. Okay, so day number two. Now I got to saw out the indentations to put the actual saw blade. And to do that, uh, make some marks with my pencil and use my Baco to saw out the channels that I need for the actual blade. So first things up, we got a measuring mark. And across. There. <laughs> it's very hard to do it like this. So you see that center line going straight up and down? That's my saw line. Now I saw this bad boy. This is my current multi-tool that I use, the Leatherman Sidekick. And I think it's got just the right fineness to it for what I need. So this is what I'm gonna try and saw through this with. The first channel cut up for blade. Now I'm gonna do the other one on the other side. All right, so both of those are cut. Now I can assemble this back together. One side on. 
Okay, now to put the blade in. So you see how that sits in there? Now these are supposed to actually uh, scooch in a little bit, exposing on each side. You see how there's a hole? And there's another one on the other side. So key rings go through those. Okay, so first I think I might actually uh, drill the holes for the uh, whistles to loop through. Okay, uh, apparently I didn't record that, but essentially I've already drilled one hole for the paracord. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna drill the other. Sorry about the weird camera angles. I don't know how much space in my office to do this stuff. Nice little drill hole on my floor. All right, so blade is in. I'm gonna attach these bad boys. One ring, that stops it from getting pulled through. Two. Blade is in place. Now I need to do up my whistless and get my cordage and tighten this up into the final shape that it needs to be. So now I hop onto my computer and just design me a simple whistless. <sighs> okay, uh, I'm kind of getting blacked out by the uh, lighting situation here, but I'm here, just dark. So next step is to take the memory card out of my 3D printer, I'll load that up on it, and Bob's your uncle, we're gonna get a 3D print started. Okay, so now comes the fun part of starting the print. So I will navigate to my memory card. We're gonna let that warm up, and then it's gonna start printing. Okay guys, day number three of working on the saw. Uh, off camera, I actually sawed into the uh, vertical supports a little bit more so that it covers up the teeth. So the teeth aren't sticking at the end there. You can see how far that kind of uh, is now embedded in there. So this is almost ready to go. Assuming it doesn't horrendously break when I try and set up the tension on it. I have gone and 3D printed myself my own custom whistless. This is solid plastic. Got some black paracord that I'm gonna use for this purpose. Okay, so now I gotta loop my paracord through here. And then through here. All right, so I've got my whistless with a hole in it. I'm gonna feed the paracord through that hole. And I believe I have to tie this around like that. Pull that taut, I'm gonna pull this as taut as I can get it. So I pull that as taut as I can get it. I'm gonna tighten this. And then, what I believe you do is just start winding this. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the whistless on there. It's pulled it nice and taut. So there is virtually no give in the blade. It's pulled nice and taut. Uh, if you take a look at how the, the whistless is on there, it is not sitting perfectly flat on there. Ideally, that should be sitting flat, but it's long enough to catch on this, and it should, theoretically, now be strong enough for me to saw with, right? Because uh, the idea is this tension up here pulls the tops in, pulls the bottom apart, which creates tension on the blade and keeps it from uh, warping as you're trying to saw things. All right, so this thing is massive, it's 30 inches. All right, and the idea is this is supposed to be uh, both a saw and a pack frame. So uh, I need something to cover up the saw blade. That's fine, I'm gonna 3D print something to do that. And essentially, this goes on the back like this. We have some straps that come up and around. And it's not the most comfortable thing in the world to wear but it's a way to create a frame of something that doubles as a saw. So, not bad for my first uh, bushcraft type saw. Definitely could use some improvement. Uh, as you can see, there's a bit of a gap in where the, uh, the horizontal bar meets the vertical bar. Again, I'm sorry, I don't remember the proper names for them. And the, the whistless is doing its job. It's stopping it from spinning out all the tension. You can see I've put quite a lot of uh, uh, twists in this. I guess now I gotta, I gotta test it, don't I? I gotta saw through something. 
Okay, so I have this random stick that I've had from a camping trip a few years ago. Okay, so maybe I can tighten it up a little bit more. As soon as it's got a bit of wobble to it. I don't want to overdo it because that's a good way to make the wood start cracking. Uh, I'm tightening up even more. Mm. Oh, that nailed me right in the thumb. Mm. Ah. Thumb's okay, but that's definitely gonna bruise. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> Woo. As you can see how much tension is in this uh, paracord right now. <laughs> that was painful. I'm gonna leave that in so you can see my screw-ups. There we go, so that's even tauter. I have wound this thing as tight as I'm willing to push this so that I don't uh, crack the wood. This thing is tight, it is not moving in the, in the uh, wood here. So now I'm gonna try and saw off another piece of this and should go much smoother now that I've got this much more tighter. Because the tighter you have the blade, the less give it's gonna have when you're sawing, to my understanding. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking like I'm an expert on this. This is literally my first saw that I've made. And it's kind of big, so it's a little unwieldy because you have to grab it right by the base. Okay. So, there you go. Does a pretty good job. Uh, I think it'd be much better on a piece of wood that's, you know, fixed and not uh, held loosely between my legs. That blade is nice and taut, so it's a 30 inch saw blade that also doubles as a pack frame. Yeah, overall I'm pretty happy considering this is the first one I've ever made. Well, uh, thanks for watching guys. If you're new to the channel, I usually combine fun futuristic technology with traditional outdoors experiences, such as 3D printing a whistless for my otherwise relatively run-of-the-mill bushcraft uh, bow saw. So consider checking out my other videos and subscribe if that's your thing. Hit the like button if you found this interesting. If you have any questions or you want to make fun of my crappy saw build, leave them down in the comment section below. If you want to help out the channel, I have comments in the description, such as a link to my online 3D print and paracord shop where I sell a variety of EDC and outdoor themed 3D prints. I also have a Patreon. Thanks for watching guys and I will catch you next video.